And I do a, a job, a, I do a very good job at what I do and uh, care very deeply about each and every person that I work with and have always had a great relationship with everybody in, in, in hockey and have never had any issues in, in over, you know, overlapping personal and, and, and uh, my views or whatever. It's never been an issue ever. And uh, so in, in saying that, the, the, one of the most disturbing things is uh, how quickly, uh, how, whatever you want to call it, cancel culture, the mob, woke mob, whatever you want to call it, and how, how quick they are in, in passing judgment about certain things. Uh, and in my case, it is not even uh, of anything I ever said <laughs> or posted. Uh, I never did anything like that. That was Dusty Emu, developmental goalie coach, formerly of the Los Angeles Kings, Winnipeg Jets, and for a hot minute, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And you are listening to the Up My Hockey podcast with Jason Padola. Just watch me now. Welcome to Up My Hockey with Jason Podolan, where we deconstruct the NHL journey, discuss what it takes to make it, and have a few laughs along the way. I'm your host, Jason Podolan, a 31st overall draft pick who played 41 NHL games, but thought he was destined for 1,000. Learn from my story and those of my guests. This is a hockey podcast about reaching your potential. Hello there, and welcome to Up My Hockey uh, for... Another episode. I'm your host, Jason Padolan, and today we are going to be going a little bit of a different direction. Uh, my guest today is Dusty Emu. For those of you who have been faithful listeners, you have to go all the way back to uh, the early days. Uh, I believe it's a single digit episode uh, where, where Dusty first appeared. Uh, he's a goaltending coach, uh, worked with the LA Kings and the Win- Winnipeg Jets, has worked with uh, Jack Campbell, and has been credited. Uh, by many as resurrecting Jack's career. Um, he's also worked with Cal Peterson and Hellebuck and Peter Budai and um, m- many, many established goalies. And he, uh, he has been dubbed the, uh, the goalie doctor or the goalie therapist. And we talked all about his strategies and the way he works with goalies and, and how he does that back in that first episode. However, this is a little bit different direction and it has to do with what happened over the summer uh, when he was hired uh, and then subsequently fired uh, hours later uh, by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, he was hired to work with the Toronto Marlies. And this episode is more about what happened there, but less about what happened there. And we try and keep it about cancel culture. What that means, what we can do about it, why it exists. Uh, and we have a conversation. Uh, I know Dusty well, uh, well, not super well, but we played together for, for a couple months in, uh, in Japan. Uh, we've, st- we stayed in contact since then. Uh, I'm definitely following his career. Um, I've been on his podcast. He's been on mine. Uh, I know him well enough to, to know him, to be comfortable in, in, uh, inviting him on the program, uh, to share his story. I said, right from the get go, when this thing first happened, I reached out to him and I said, Hey, if you ever want to talk about this, you know, I'm your guy. You know, let, let, let's talk about this. Let's see what happened. Um, and for those of you who don't know the entire story, we will get into it. But Dusty has been silent about it uh, for, I guess, five months now. Um, it happened in August. He was advised by his lawyers not to speak about it. Uh, so he didn't He didn't uh, go public with anything uh, until recently. And, uh, and he put out a statement just recently, which I'll read now. Uh, we talk about it on the, on the episode here. I got to put my reading glasses on. Oh my goodness. I'm getting old and I can't see anymore. So, um, this is a, a statement from Dusty. In light of the events that happened to me in early August, I feel that I am ready. I would like to speak out now. It has shocked me that I was publicly shamed for some of my Twitter likes, which soon after cost me my job. It has been heartbreaking to see the things that some people were labeling me as. Heartbreaking because my family has had to read and listen to this, and because I am none of these things. People that know me know this. For the record, 
I am not a transphobic or homophobic person. I've always believed that people have the right to choose their own path. I am definitely not a racist or a white supremacist, seen as I am a minority and I have dealt with racism since I was a child. Even more importantly, I have never pushed or even shared my views with anyone outside my family and a few close friends. I don't quite care whether you are black, white, yellow, purple, left, right, center, or out to lunch on the moon. I will always, I will and always have accepted my friends, family, and people I don't even know for who they are. That is their right and freedom to be proud of. Uh, it is their right and freedom to be proud of who they are. My views on politics and the world issues don't define me as a person and where my heart is, as they don't for you. I'm just trying to be the best version of me that I can. We are all watching the world unfold and are forming views and opinions that are ever-changing, and that should be okay. What we shouldn't do is let it divide us. Although you might not agree with me or I might not agree with you, I will always try to keep my arms open to you. It is my hope that you will do the same. Sincerely, Dusty. So that was Dusty's statement after um, these Twitter likes, which we get into, and, and some of these other things that, that happened where he was called transphobic and he was called homophobic and he was called racist. Um, for likes, let, let's be clear here, for likes on comments. We didn't get into the specifics. Uh, uh, and I wish we kind of did, to be honest. Um, but whatever, I left it up to Dusty to where he wanted to go with it. Uh, because they were nefarious at best. I mean, what he was liking did not say anything. Because you like a Trump post doesn't mean that you're a racist or a misogynist. Um, it, it doesn't mean, you know, it, it doesn't mean anything if, if you like a post uh, about Trump. Uh, it's, it's, some, some of these other ones were just, it was baffling to me how, how quickly this thing turned. So, uh, and we get into it in the story here. So we try and keep it on the rails and this is, by Dusty's request was not specifically about the inner workings and the details of how it all unraveled with the Toronto Maple Leafs and how after Brendan Shanahan's comment he, that he is probably blackballed throughout the entire league now, uh, unnecessarily, uh, but we talk about cancel culture and we talk about it because it exists. It happens. People are frightened by it. People in the media are scared uh, about it. And so they don't touch subjects and they don't want to dig in and they don't want to help somebody like Dusty. And so this is our way of having a conversation about this. This is something that has bothered me uh, since its inception, meaning cancel culture. It is something that actually scares me. Uh, that people's voices are not allowed to be heard. Um, not to mention even in Dusty's scenario, like I, I'm no lawyer, but like even the legality of, uh, of, some, of, these, of some of these things. Um, <laughs> where your opinions lie and whether they help him be a, a good, good goaltending coach or not are, are definitely uh, to be questioned. So anyways, I think this is a conversation you can have amongst your friends, amongst your family. Um, what is the... What is the what is the solution to cancel culture and, and, and how, do we, how do we move forward? Um, I really sincerely uh, feel empathy for Dusty. Uh, I know he's got a big heart and I know he's a good human. And, uh, and how he was portrayed in the papers uh, is, is just unfair. I mean, it's just plain and simple. But, uh, you know, society has, has cast its wand and, and, is, and has cast its judgment and people move on. But for Dusty, he's, he's uh, you know, still living in it. He has moved on, as you can hear in this episode, um, with grace, I might add, and with, uh, with eloquence. Um, and I'm proud of him for that. But it doesn't mean that it's right and it doesn't mean that it should happen. So uh, I hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good one and uh, it's a little bit different, like I said, that, than others, but I think it's worth listening to. So Please enjoy my conversation with goaltending coach Dusty Emu. All right, here we are with Dusty Emu, former guest, uh, back for round two. And although it's always good to see your face, Dusty, um, this is a topic that we need to dive into, and we're going to get into your story um, with the Leafs, with cancel culture, with um, 
you know what what you're doing now and uh i'm glad you're able to join us here thanks for coming man it's good to see you again buddy yeah no thanks um so in the intro i've kind of laid out what we're doing here uh dusty so well for the readers they kind of know the background um for those who followed the Toronto Maple Leafs and and the off season, um, it, it was it was not a small story. But then, as it comes with cancel culture, these kind of things just seem to go away. Um, but yet, it doesn't go away for you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you're at a spot now where you're prepared here to sit here and talk and share your story. And I'm so grateful that you're willing to do that because I think it's a topic that's really really important. But for the listeners and for the audience here, can we maybe walk back, you know, to the summer and just talk about you know, what it was like being Dusty Emu, you know, looking for a job, you know, talking with the May police, what that process was like and the lead up to, um, I'll say it in quotes, your hiring, because essentially you you were hired uh, as far as I understand. So uh, do you mind walking us down that lane? Yeah, sure. Um, well, you everyone knows that uh, Soupy Jack Campbell is in Toronto and and uh, and we're pretty tight and we go back and, and uh, work together you know, over the phone and stuff like that. So uh, there's a connection there. And my agent uh, came to me and said that um, they were actually looking uh, to talk to me possibly about if I would be interested in the the development or Marley's job. They, they actually said the Marley's uh, goaltending coach. And it really wasn't what I wanted to do uh, to go back to that uh, the development role. Uh, that was kind of part of one of the reasons why I left LA. I wanted another challenge. Uh, so I went to the KHL and, and then when I came back, uh, uh, cause of the whole COVID thing, jobs, it, what, there wasn't a job sitting for me here. And this job opportunity came up and I did the interview process. I said, I would talk to them, you know, it wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I said, I would talk to them and then talk with Soupy. And uh, that that pretty much made up my mind that I wanted to be around uh, him, and he and I thought I could help him indirectly, and then also uh, use my expertise in helping the to develop some of their goalies in Toronto. So I thought, you know what, let's see if we can make this work. So I think it was about a month process or so, and you know, with the interviews and whatnot, and uh, everything was awesome. It was great, and uh, got. Uh, can we maybe? I'm just going to stop you there, if you don't yeah. mind, because I think that's an interesting part for a lot of our listeners. I know it is for me, even what that looks like. You know, a lot of us have been on job interviews before, but not for a goal t- co- goaltending uh, coach mm-hmm. position. Um, what, like, how does that work in your world? Who, who does the interview? Uh, what type of questions are they asking? And, and, and maybe walk us through a little bit of that. Well, you know what? Uh, it's different with every team. When I was in Winnipeg, it was one way. When I went to LA, it was a totally different interview process. It was really quite quick. Uh, I guess too, the the more tenure or more experience that you have, you know, interviews change when as opposed to when you're into doing your first interview and you had never coached in the AHL. But uh, by the time I got to this one. Um, uh, you know, I was I was speaking mainly with assistant GMs and and uh, coaches, you know, and I did separate interviews, you know, along that way. So everybody's trying to get their their hand on me as as a person, and uh, because you know I do have a reputation uh, for being a little bit different as far as how I coach and a lot more personal and and it not a, not as much about the X's and O's of it all. Uh, so. They wanted to be sure that it was is right, so I talked with quite a few people actually, and uh, it was great. The, everybody was great to me, and uh, you know, as we move along here, I just want you know they, uh, you know, the people that I dealt with were were, were great to me. So, right. Well, I, and one of the reasons why I asked that was was not uh, to be sneaky at all, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, part of part of the process of of when this kind of unfolded and unraveled was it, it seemed to me like the admission from the May police was, well, they didn't do their homework essentially, you know? So I was just mm-hmm. wondering, like, you know, you mentioned they were trying to find out what type of person you were and you know, what, what, what made you tick and what have you. I was just wondering what type of, if those types of questions were, were asked during the process. Uh, 
you know what uh, there was a lot, a lot of questions a lot of yeah we we pretty much they knew everything about me you know this you know that was pertained to my my personality my as far as my professionalism and and what pertained towards the job and uh i think i i thought it was well done and and very thorough but uh you know you can anyone can speculate you know by looking at it from the outside on on whether it was done uh, thoroughly or not that's not for me to judge but uh, it was a long process yeah. gotcha so so you walk through this process uh four to five weeks long if i remember correctly uh and you get word why don't we talk about that you get word uh that you have you know been hired or you're the guy right uh and then there's mm -hmm. these steps kind of towards what was going to be the uh, the press release or the announcement? And why don't you why why don't you talk about those kind of the last few hours there leading up to uh, to the announcement? Mm, yeah, the I think I can't remember the exact date. So I think it was like the seventh or something like that of August. Uh, um, yeah, it was all done. Is and and then the next morning, uh, my son texted me and said there was a, a tweet. Uh, from them that uh, uh, I'd been hired. And, and then I got a bunch of tons of uh, right away texts and phone calls and stuff about congratulations. And then uh, in the midst of that, I got another one from my son again saying, uh, hey, dad, you better check your Twitter because uh, uh, a, a few people are, are ripping on you. And from there, I went on and I, you know, I privatized the account just to see what was going on. And uh, that's kind of where the story takes a different turn. <laughs> and uh, and then from there, yeah, that's a, I'm kind of where <laughs> I am now. <laughs> well, right. So, so we're talking about hours here, right? Because like, wasn't there like, there was supposed to be, I don't remember exactly from the last time we talked, but uh it was kind of released without you knowing that you like it was going to be public, correct? Like there was there was a couple of little things you thought you were going to speak to somebody or whatever, and then all of a sudden it's kind of announced, right? You, you like the the formality of it. You're getting emails from from the Maple Leafs saying, "Yeah, welcome to the team," like that type of stuff, right? Like that you were you were on board, and uh, and then they they announced it publicly. Is that is that accurate? Um, that yeah, well, it was on Twitter, so yeah, right, yeah, okay, and then there shortly thereafter. Um, I don't even know what what they're called. Some some Twitter trolls or social media trolls um, seem to find some ammunition in in some of your social media accounts that uh, that all of a sudden gets some attention. Um, mm -hmm. Is that a accurate way to put it? Yeah, it because it, it is very general, but and that's kind of how uh, it it really was. But then it, you know they they were laser focused <laughs> on. Uh, on creating this storm and uh and they did it <laughs> yeah right so as that and maybe we can get into like what what they were looking at and maybe mm -hmm. people are interested um maybe they're not i don't know where your comfort level is at maybe we can talk a little bit about that um i know i can vouch for you personally you know that one you're not you're not a huge platform guy with anything political or or otherwise um no and then i did hear that they were you know that they weren't they weren't you spouting off about anything in particular, but rather just a comment or, I mean, a like of, of somebody else's, whatever it was. Um, so maybe we can get into that, but like, maybe we'll stick to the, to the timeline here. So now you've been announced on Twitter that you've been hired. Uh, there's also been this, uh, this Twitter uprising or whatever uh, on Twitter. What happens um, in the communication process of like where you stand? Like, were you contacted by the Leafs at any point? Um you know, maybe we should probably skip to a little bit past that. Um, you know, I I don't want to involve them, you know, because really what essentially you and I really want to talk about is as we move along here. I'll, 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 I'll move the timeline properly, but I don't want to focus on on uh, the team or anything like that. Uh, I let everyone else be judges of that. Um, I moved on from that, so I'm good. But right. uh, it, yeah, it's out there. And then um, 
within, you know, with everybody's trying to make heads or tails of it. Uh, they're trying to do their due diligence and, and whatnot. And then, and then, um, uh, then something else was released and, and, uh, I was no longer a part of the equation. <laughs> That's all I'll say. And, and f- from there, uh, <clears throat> it, it literally took, I don't even think it was 48 hours. Right. Well, I, I mean, I have the post from Brennan Shannon here. It, can I, can I share, I'll share it here. Is that okay? It's your podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, it's, um, I think it's, I think it's relevant, you know, I mean, to the story. And at least it like it puts this thing in a place where maybe people can understand who never saw this. Uh, and let's see if I have it, can bring it up here. Um, yeah, okay, here it is. So, yeah, so this this comes online. Um, and this is where I became aware of it mm. as just as, you know, a general person, right? That, that this dusty email, Emu will not be joining the Toronto Marlies. We made a mistake by not thoroughly following our organizational protocols when considering this candidate for the position of goaltending coach for the Toronto Marlies, Brennan Shanahan, president and alternate governor. Like, that's a pretty, you know, I don't know what the right word is. Um but it's not, it makes you sound like they, like you know, one, you're bad. And two, they made, they made some horrible mistake. Like that was me, general public reading that. Um, like, what were your thoughts when you read that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a tough one, you know, for sure. It uh, caught me off guard. Right. Hmm. Now, because we want to talk about cancel culture. I mean, again, so this is like within, as you said, within 48 hours, maybe more, maybe less from you being announced publicly to being fired publicly um, over something to do with social media uh, and something that they claim wasn't, you know, uncovered in the interview process that they deem important enough uh, not to bring you along. Like, I think it's relevant what it was, not in the sense that I think it's relevant that they were justified or unjustified, but just in the fact that how this has impacted you personally, how this has impacted your job, how this has impacted your higher to bit higher ability, and and why somebody as powerful as the Toronto Maple Leafs organization are succumbing to this type of stuff, um, I think it gets a little bit scary uh, for a lot of people that are involved in anything right now. Um, so, I mean, I'll let you kind of go where you want with that. Like, can, can we talk about what the what the likes were or, or what the uh, you know what where this whole thing originated from um you know there there are some things in my life that i'm not and here's the ironic thing i'm not comfortable things that i'm not comfortable in sharing uh about me or whatever hence i've never posted it (laughs) anything right i i keep that stuff to myself and and it's my my business and nobody else's um uh and i do a a job i I do a very good job at what i do and uh care very deeply about each and every person that i work with and have always had a great relationship with everybody in 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 hockey and have never had any issues in in over you know overlapping personal and, and and uh, my views or whatever. It's never been an issue, ever. And uh, so in, in saying that, the, the one of the most disturbing things is uh, how quickly, uh, how, whatever you want to call it, cancel culture, the mob, woke mob, whatever you want to call it, and how how quick they are in, in passing judgment about certain things. Uh, and in my case, it is not even... Uh, of anything I ever said <laughs> or posted, uh, I never did anything like that, and people kind of miss the boat on this because people are so quick to jump on board when they see anything that anyone tweets or posts about racism, uh, um, uh, homophobia, you know, transphobia, you name anything, all these touchy subjects. If anyone posts anything, it doesn't matter whether it's right, re- true, or false 
right or wrong, uh, people just jump on it. And what that's kind of what happened with me is uh, there were um, tweet, Twitter likes that someone had to, and they had to do, my hat goes off to them, they had to go scour through it it's not easy to do you got to go into the likes and scroll and scroll and find these these uh the things that i liked or whatever and and then what they've done is they said well he liked this post so this means he's this uh he liked this post so this means he's this and they just went to bat they, they went to you know town on the whole thing and what disturbs me even more is there's a small group that did it that got it going. But the worst part about it was uh, the media, uh, like, you know, I don't know, ESPN, TSN, you know, whatever. I can't remember which uh, uh, networks they were, but the headlines about it were totally false. Like the headlines were like, Dusty Emo fired because of extremist tweets. That's that's just wrong. It's not accurate. <laughs> I never tweeted anything. You know what I mean? And to say that um, if I if I um, like to tweet about uh, that was a, a supporting a fun, uh, you know, supporting the police and not defunding them, like it would. That's an assumption that as to why I liked the tweet. Nobody knows why I liked it. I could have a buddy in the picture, in the video. You know what I mean? Right, right. No, Nobody knows. But what they d- took from that is that he supports this. So that means he's anti-black. How figure? Like, um, it, it means nothing of the sort. You know what I mean? Right. I, I no, just use one of those as that's a, far, a, far, far reaching, right? As and an example, yeah. you know, um, and you know, the other one was uh, if I liked a, a Trump uh, tweet, uh, not even Trump because Trump wasn't on, but uh, about Trump. Um, that means uh, you take your pick on this one. <laughs> you know, I'm like racist, uh, anti Hispanic, black, you name it, uh, um, sexist. Uh, Oh, and the kicker was the white supremacist. Someone called me a white supremacist. They, they like, uh, take a look at me. I, I just, I don't know how I fit that ca- category. <laughs> you know, um, right. you know, I've dealt with racism my whole life. I've been a, mi- a minority myself. So, uh, it was like no one really saw the what was going on. They just jumped on on this train of just kind of attacking because they thought I, I, I supported these things or, or was a, this was what I was all about, but nobody really knew, you know what I mean? It's going to take a short break from the episode to thank you for tuning in. Uh, I didn't do that last episode and I try to do that every time because I do appreciate uh, the audience. I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate you guys sharing and letting me know that you enjoy what I'm producing and the content and the guests and what the objective here is. So thanks so much. Uh, As always, uh, those of you who have left reviews on iTunes, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, who share on other platforms, I appreciate it. Every time you do a share and somebody else listens in for the first time, uh, hopefully you're making a difference for them as hockey players or as hockey parents because uh, of the value of the podcast and what we choose to talk about here and sharing information that matters, uh, that can make a difference, that can really be helpful uh, for these for these players who are navigating uh, their hockey journeys. So thanks again for sharing. Thanks for getting the message out. Uh, now back to our very important conversation with Dusty Emu on cancel culture. Right. And that's like, and that's the inherent danger of what it is we're talking about, because, you know, liking, liking a post that is pro police does not mean that you're anti black. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like like it's so not even in the same world. Right. But like the, the way, the way media and the way these things are covered is that, that is what, what it is turning out to be. Um, 
and I don't know if it's like a leftist media. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I, maybe we're not here to figure out why. But like the thing that's con- like the most concerning part to me is when you told me, um, and I'll say this for the re- for, for the people who are listening here, like you were a little bit of a TV darling for a while, a media darling, because this resurrection of Jack Campbell, and obviously he's playing in the biggest market in, in, uh, in the NHL, and he's having all this success, and they dig in and they find out you're involved in it. So everybody wants to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Right. Like you were you were everywhere. You were on TSN, you're on Sportsnet. You, I mean, you were on the radio shows. So it wasn't like you were a foreigner to these people. And then this happens. And tell me how many people called your phone. Yeah, that that's that's a tough one. Um, I've come through this though, and it's no, it's but all- hold on, but seriously, <laughs> tell how many people called Dusty? Not not many. And to me, and I just want to step in because I I know that you have your opinion of it and and I'm going to just say my opinion of it because mm-hmm. that's to me is where the danger is because you can have a group of people that think a certain thing, right? Like that's going to mm-hmm. happen, right? And people are going to maybe want to stir the pot and do whatever they want. But isn't it up to somebody to try and understand the truth of it instead of being completely scared and frightened and running and going silent? Like that's the part to me that is like nuts. Like how come no one called and said, Hey Dusty, what's up? Is this real? Is this not real? Like what's going on? You, you know, I, I, I want to say this though. I had tons of support. I'm not saying nobody contacted me, uh, but there was a lot of private messages. Um, not, nobody public uh, for the longest time. Uh, it, nobody public that was of some sort of celebrity in in my in my in our hockey uh, right. world of business, um, because to be quite honest, people are were totally scared of it. Like it freaked them out, and uh, I won't you know name t- names or organizations, but like people that I know that I'm friends with, um, and through the teams I work with, they the whole staffs were going. <laughs> Right away, they were going through their um, their accounts and going, "Holy sh- smokes! If you can get look what's happened to Dusty, and they know me as a person, and are like, if this can happen to him over Twitter likes, so everybody was just scratching their accounts, right? Like just cleaning house on just likes, right? Because like you you could perceive and you could pick anything." You know what I mean? And go, well, oh, this yeah. is this is a little bit, you know, um, racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or whatever. And all it takes yeah. is a few trolls to post something. But yeah, the I, I just want to clarify, I had tons of people, you know, support wise. But in saying that, there were a lot of people that I was surprised that kind of disappeared, um, that went kind of silent because it's like they didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole kind of thing. Or they kind of just scout, you know, um, skimmed over what they saw. Like you said, you're yeah. like, "Holy smokes! Oh, I can't believe he would do that, or I can't believe he would right. say that." Say that, and they kind of just dusted me off, right? And don't really know uh, about any of it, uh, what really went down or anything. But it, it, it was kind of um, a. a I don't want to say beautiful moment, but a, a really um, awakening moment for me to be able to see the real true friends and ones that probably w- were more just a, uh, business acquaintances uh, that I can move on from. And I'm okay with that. Now, you know what? I'm okay with that. But it would be nice, it would be good for everybody to to have a little more, you know, understanding and just or want to understand it what really happened as before you kind of um, make your assumptions. Right. Well, and yeah. I mean, what, what is the definition of cancel culture? Like in, to me, it, it's like when the media covers it a certain way, like you already said, like what the headlines were, right. Mm-hmm. It was, it was reaching to begin with and wrong. And you would think there would be someone in the public eye that would want to know the truth of it. Right. Like that would yeah. want to know the truth and would actually want to cover the story because there is a story there in and of itself, but when the media is even scared to touch it and then they just leave it alone and now you don't have a job and it's all untrue. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's the part that makes like, the, 
that was the part that made me sick and it still makes me sick. Like the way, the way stuff happens with that. And obviously your, your story is your story and it happened to you personally, but it's happening all over the place in different areas. Right. right? Um, so I don't know. I mean, I just, I appreciate you saying that, that people supported you. And of course they would, because you're a good dude and people that you touch know what you're like. So I'm sure that, I'm sure that you did have a lot of support, but why there is no one that wants to publicly cover it is like, that's scary to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's scary. Well, it is as as hot a story as it was at the beginning, right? Because it yeah. was it actually created, but in in the in the negative way because it was people. Let's let's be honest. Our society we we gravitate uh, the energy of the negative energy is 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 a lot more um, mesmerizing to the public, and and that's what we feed off of. It's just how we are in psychology of people, uh, negative, uh, things, uh, attract more. It's just how it is. So that right at the beginning, it was, it was quite hot, uh, the story, unfortunately for, for me, <laughs> but, uh, uh, what you mentioned, it was quite astonishing, but not so much. Cause I do understand now more and more every day, how nobody wanted to talk to me and hear from what I had to say about it uh and then the the media just posted and talked about it the one thing about what had happened to me and and it was big and that was it and it and all the different people that i've interviewed with on different uh, networks and whatnot uh that i would have thought would have been calling me right away to find out crickets you know what I mean? And I'd done plenty of interviews. Excuse me, like what what you said with up up to that, you know, the last year and bit before the build up with with Soupy's success and whatnot, um, being on Hockey Night in Canada and all these different things. It it uh, nobody really wanted to hear that end of it, and not and this is just an opinion. I believe it's a lot to do with because. Uh, narratives and, and agendas and also the people that the personal people that I know that are reporters and stuff are probably scared <laughs> you know even if they kind of secretly think well I heard that Dusty didn't even tweet this or whatever and you know to find out to dig a little would be going the wrong way on the whole thing and uh, don't want to touch it yeah, and I guess I'm just living in the dark ages because I think that those questions, like from a reporter, is you know if if you wanted to talk about them, if this was something worthy of you being let go for, I think that the discussion is worth having. It's worth asking you the question and you saying whatever it is you want to say about it. You yeah. know, instead of just posting this headline and then going away and not even hearing from the person who they're talking about. Like I think that's bad. That's bad reporting. That's bad storytelling. Um, and again, for the general public, because we're such a headline driven type of society now where like we get our news in five second increments. Yeah. You know, you have to read. In your case, you couldn't even read into the story and find the real story. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people that did contact me were like, uh, I've been trying to figure out <laughs> based on the headline they read. Yeah. Uh, where all this is coming from. And they couldn't. Um, like you, you know, you could go down and it's hard to find the tweets uh, that I liked or whatever. Uh, and you know, obviously they have them because they screenshot them all. But, uh, I mean, as if you were just going to dig yourself and try to see what kind of person I was or whatever, there's right. definitely zero tweets from me. Yeah. Um, and then you go on my Insta or whatever, like, uh, all, it's it's so ridiculous because all I've been my whole being uh, as a coach, anyways, and how I use social media is is really I just try to uplift and be positive and uh, and help and motivate and uh, it, so I remember after quite soon thereafter this hell happened, I got a couple trolls on my Instagram. Just, I posted the last uh, Insta post I did, f f like it was the day, two days before this had happened. Uh, 
was about uh, being motivated in the gym and, and uh, you know, being on the back nine, but I feel great. I haven't drank in 10, 12 years. And, and uh, it was just to try to be motivated. And since it was the last Instagram post, these trolls went on my freaking uh, this post and started just uh, saying these nasty, evil things about me. And uh, <laughs> I was reading my post and I'm going, how does this fit? <laughs> you know, and then someone, they go out really out of their way. They went on to my podcast uh, on Apple and left a couple of reviews and, you know, just uh, vile uh, things and, and saying, and they switched to the Wikipedia, uh, you know, they switched it all up and said all these really nasty things about me. And um, uh, they're good at what they do. I'll give them that. <laughs> I'll give them that. It's so funny, whoever these they are, you know, we, we use that, that pronoun, you know, like, <laughs> oh, they know everything, you know, like with this, they, like, I don't know who they are, like who, who, wh what are they doing and what agenda is it? And who has that much time to do it? And what's the motivation? Like, I don't, I just yeah. don't even, like, I can't even comprehend that. I'm so far away from living like that. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, I, I want to touch one thing, Jason, uh, that, uh, as negative as down feeling sometimes this can feel and 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 how we're what we're living in right now and, and this topic we're talking about it's kind of heavy <laughs> but I, I will say this my uh i think it was my uncle or or someone uh texted me and, and said um i just want you to know i just because sportsnet had posted something right and the comments you know, we're, we're coming in and he said he went through like 200 plus comments and he goes, I don't know if you care to know this. He goes, but for every one negative comment, there were 30 positive ones in support of me and, and whatnot. So it's not the majority. Uh, I, I will say that. And it, it right. was, it was encouraging and felt good to know that, uh, common sense is still out there it just it tends to be not the voice that is heard as much because they're a little more timid and scared about this whole thing and this culture and so the the one that is out there they use this their platforms uh, you know it's their boxing gloves right yeah, but isn't that an interesting discussion just in and of itself then? Like, I mean, if, if if that if that sample size, let's say, is true and we could extrapolate that across the, the spectrum, right. right? Like that from the public comments. And if there is a majority of people that do have common sense and would like to know the whole story and would think it's ridiculous that you never got the job because of this, like why why is this vocal minority? that doesn't make sense, that isn't pragmatic, that is casting judgment quickly without even knowing the answers. Like, why are they winning? Mm, yeah. Like, I don't understand a, that. It's a, it's a tough, that's a whole nother podcast, <laughs> a whole nother podcast. But, but I try to use it uh, to empower me and, and be positive that there are, are good people out there. And uh, I'm not going to let the couple, of people um, out there definitely not ruin my life. Like it uh, on, on the surface, it looks horrible and uh, yeah, it's been, it hasn't been easy and it's going to be a challenge uh, moving forward. Um, but uh, you know, I'm, what do you call me? Gen X. So like, <laughs> I'm not going to sit back and, and not move forward because of this. Yeah. Um and if anything, as time moves on, I get a little bit more powerful. I get a little stronger from this. And that's why it took me some time. And I was, you know, there were some other reasons why I was quiet for so long. It was like four or five months, right? Uh, and I didn't do anything for so it was social media. And you're the first person that I've spoken with um, since it had happened. But through that time... I've used these things and each and each little thing that kind of at first really rubbed me wrong, maybe hurt me too emotionally. And then it became kind of like fuel and, and the support too from the people that I mentioned that did say some beautiful things and, 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 
and really had my back. You know, even if it was privately, it was still uh, kind of built strength in me as time went on here. And now I'm ready to speak. Now I'm not out here to to bash the that you know the team or whatever. That, that that's that's not the focus. I wanted to come on when we spoke before we started the podcast. It was more about uh, being able to have the freedom to have an opinion and 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 to be able to 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 debate to have different opinions to disagree um i did ha- you saw i don't know if you saw but i posted the first thing i i had posted since it had happened and i it was it was kind of a statement and and in that statement my biggest thing that i wanted people to know is that w- with all this um, hatred and divide uh it's really making it worse in in the world we're living in right now and all the challenges and changing of opinions and whatnot. I just think that we got to really focus on not letting it divide us and it should be okay to have the freedom to have a different opinion than someone else. Um, And that's, that's what makes the world beautiful is, is to be able to disagree, but, you know, find common ground and this and that. But the way the things are now, it's like people are scared to even post something that might be one way or the other, you know, you know, it should be okay. You know, as long as, you know, you, you know, you're you know, spreading real nasty thing, even, even if it is nasty, it's, it's your, it should be your freedom and, and you got to deal with the consequences. But I think coming out now and and talking more about this with with what had happened with me is a good good example because I didn't even say anything, and it really shows how <laughs> once you get hit with everyone looks at cancel culture and go yeah it sucks, sucks or whatever, but the average Joe doesn't really get it until it actually happens to you and it really. Affects it alters your life, right? It really does. Um, and that's why I think it's an important thing to maybe speak out and, 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 and start talking about it and not in a, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to come out here and rip on the few people that started the whole thing because there were a couple people of support, more supporters from the Twitter thing that found the first few people that got the ball rolling. Yeah. And you know, they, you know, someone posted something like that and then, you know, then it just becomes a bang, 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 you know, back and forth. Right. And uh, you're trying to, um, you know, out them and, 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 you know, you know, ridicule and, and, and bring down that person. And then they'll try to fire back at you. And it's just an ugly, ugly ring to be in, man. And it does no, serves no purpose. Uh, I just would like to talk about it and try to encourage more, more so use my, my story as an example, but not turn it into a, a hate uh, um, campaign. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my head's going so many different places. I mean, there's been, there's yeah. two examples that come up to me outside of yours in, you know, recent hockey history where um, like the one was that kid that got drafted by the Arizona um coyotes and he was the guy that had the history i don't know if you remember or not but he had a history of back in like grade nine he he had this this history with this kid in his local high school where he he ended up getting suspended the kid was black um i won't get into all the parameters of this thing but he it was something that went to court um was, was found he was found guilty the certain way there's there's a lot of nuances to the story here there and the other anyways he gets drafted by the arizona coyotes he had sent out a letter to everybody in the national hockey league like acknowledging this from three or four years previous you know that this is this is out there um he ends up getting drafted by arizona somebody brings up this story that was public it wasn't like it was private um and the arizona coyotes ended up like reneging on their draft pick which they knew about Right. So they knew about this thing, but because cancel culture got involved, they ended up uh, outing this kid, like undrafting him, releasing him. And his school, University of North Dakota, where he was going to school and who had recruited him, who knew about it as well, ended up uh, letting go of him. 
right? So now he's in the USHL, this kid. Um, everyone kind of wanted nothing to do with them, even though they knew the story, like they understood where he was now, kind of what happened back in the day and thought that whatever, they'd made a judgment call, right? And then people jump on board and then they, they're they getting rid of him. Nobody wants anything to do with this kid. And then the other one that comes to mind is the Montreal Canadiens who drafted this other kid um, this year who had this conviction or some type of conviction in uh, when he was playing over in Sweden. They drafted him. Same thing, cancer culture picks up. And then Montreal Canadiens just made a public statement, say, hey, we were aware of this and we're standing by him and we're going to help, you know, whatever, get him through the process. And we're going to make sure that we're part of the solution, not part of the problem. So there was two different, you know, like there's two different ways, I guess, to handle these things. And I'm not saying the Montreal Canadiens handled it right. Like maybe they should have let him go. I don't know anything about this kid. Do but I just know that like pretending that you don't know or not wanting to know the real truth and not wanting to be able to stand in a leadership position and give your truth of what's right to them, you know, like the Montreal Canadiens did that. Mm -hmm. The Arizona Coyotes, from my understanding, ran from something that they knew. You know, like two different scenarios there, right? Because one's scared, one's taking a, a leadership position. Like again, Montreal Canadiens might be completely wrong, but at least they're acknowledging the fact that they knew this, they did their homework, and now they're going to stand by it. You know, mm -hmm. and the, I, I don't, I can respect that. I can respect that in a leadership position, you know, and I think, when you when people get scared of having an opinion that might be unpopular to some people and now that's affecting how they lead and how they choose they shouldn't be in the leadership position in the first place right in my opinion i don't i don't, I don't know like and that's and again i'm not here to bash the leafs either but like it's, it's not about that but it's it, it is about like where's the integrity in the process Right. And where is the where is the want to find out what the truth is or the truth isn't? And to me, reading, you know, even how it came out, you know, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that forever, as you already said, will you know, they'll think of you as whatever they think of you from the headline. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. don't know, you know. Yeah. And now because of that, too, you know, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, I there's a lot of teams that who's going to sign up there to say, hey, I want Dusty Emu now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a valid question. Uh, one that I, I don't know the answer to yet, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I've already made a uh, peace with all of that and, right. and, um, I've treated it as, um, I don't need, you know, I don't, I, I looked at the NHL and I'm like, okay, who seriously, if this is kind of how the society in general is, and I'm not talking just the NHL, uh, where do I fit in, in this whole scheme? Where do I fit in this whole scheme of things? And uh, I'm like, you know what? I probably, uh, if I'm awake to this whole thing and, and, and active in doing the right thing, I should probably be realistic. <laughs> and, uh, and for all intents and purposes, I'm ready to, to not work in the NHL. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and it, as much as I have moments of being sad that because uh, I love working with guys and, and uh, helping them and and even to the you know this day with Soupy and I and and uh, you know I love the guy and I you know that's not changing <laughs> yeah, yeah. and and we still uh, um, I still help and uh, keep you know keeping him on the tracks and 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 I just would love nothing more for him to, to uh, do everything that he could possibly dream of. And that part saddens me that I won't be, be able to be on the ice, you know, doing that with someone you know, to, to get him to the NHL or, or win a Stanley cup or whatever. But uh, you know, I got to be true to me too and hold my head high and know that I, I didn't do anything wrong. You know what I mean? I really didn't. Um, I didn't do anything wrong or that I should be ashamed of. Like pe some people, you know, fringe, not, I won't even say friends, but acquaintances uh, advising me, you know, maybe to release an apology soon thereafter, you know, and I was like, hell freeze over before I do that. You know, I'm not sorry for anything. Right. You know, uh, I feel awful about what has happened and, and 
if if someone from the transgender uh, community or uh, black community or whatever you know all found offense to what people were saying about me i feel i feel bad about that but if they dig find out uh, means nothing uh, it's not true about me i don't feel this way about you or or you uh, or this type of uh, community um, then it would die off and it would be fine but that's not kind of what happened uh, so it's kind of it saddens me that i'm not going to be able to be a part of that uh, but i'm okay with it um, i'm getting stronger from it and kind of we're at where we are now yeah well that whole I mean, we've been a little bit, I think, aloof, and it maybe you, you maybe you want to, but you mentioned the word you, you were labeled a transphobe, and you mentioned the word transgender. Now, can we talk about that one tweet that you liked, like the like what in, what the context was of that? Because I think it's it might be able to shine some light on the fact of how quick these things go to that label, right? With having opinion within mm. that subject, like that yeah. is actually a very widely held popular belief, and not that popular belief is correct. Like I'm not going to say that. Like what the majority thinks is right, that's not true. Right. Um, in this situation, though, it's not like this is like some fringe type of, you know, philosophy that that you liked that, that this comment on it. Can we can we talk about that one with the Olympics? Uh, yeah, someone uh, there's a comedian I follow, and I I think I, I'm guessing that this was the one. I don't like soon thereafter. I already I know the types of stuff that I look at or like or whatever, but I didn't know exactly which ones, and I didn't scour through all the negative comments, like that'll kill somebody. Yeah, no, <laughs> you no, know no, what no. I mean? Yeah, I I knew what had happened, and that's excuse me, all I needed to know. But I think it was um, from a comedian, and it they posted something that was quite. Uh, had a humorous uh, tone to it, but was addressing a, 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 and it was a small tweet addressing the issue of uh, um, uh, transgender um, um, being in the Olympics. Males competing against females, correct? Yeah, yeah, right. and I and I liked it. Yeah, but now let's be clear: like, no one knows exactly what part of the the whole process about that or that i like or don't no one knows exactly why i liked it and that's my business <laughs> right you know what i mean yeah no fair but it has zero to do with whether i like transgender people or not like right. zero right. like i it, it it makes zero no sense and anybody that look me in the eye, not on a tweet, <laughs> look me in the eye and tell me that I don't like a transgender person and I'm a, a crap person for, for liking that tweet. Uh, I, you'd probably be hard pressed to find, like it, it's easy to hide behind these tweets and, and, and these attacks on, on, on social media. But the truth of the matter is nobody knows why I like something um, and, I, but at the end of the day, even if I had an opinion, I have that right to have that opinion about, uh, something like that, but it doesn't mean that I don't like the person, you know right. what I mean? Like it, it really doesn't. And, uh, you know, and that would be when I, my statement I made, I did say, you know, I do not, uh, I'm not transphobic or, 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 or homophobic in any way, shape, or form. Everybody has the right to be who they want to be and feel comfortable and be open about who they are. I'm all for that. But as that goes with me too. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like I should have that right too. Right. But apparently, one way you're not allowed to be open and have your opinion, but another way you can. Uh, and that's not cool either, right? Right. But, but what a slippery slope. And that's what I mean. Like for me, I mean, for me to say, I don't believe that a male, a, a person born a male that is a transgender female that wants to participate in the Olympics against females should be able to do that. Like if I say that, I don't, I don't label myself as transphobic. 
There's nothing about that to me that's transphobic. That's just an opinion on where they should be able to compete or not compete on a fair playing spectrum. Yeah. That's dangerous though, right? Like to not to not be able to hold that opinion and say that or to like something that maybe says that and now you are transphobic is like ludicrous to me. Yeah. And, and, and then to take it a step further, even if you did hold that opinion, and let's just say it's a small snapshot, but then now you're not able to be a goalie coach because of that opinion <laughs> is even more abstract and crazy to me. Yeah. You know, like, so like, what is the lessons here though? Like, again, we're, we're not here to bash anyone or anything, but this has happened. This right. is happening. You know, like, what is the solution? Where's the lessons? Like, would you do anything different if you were to do it again? Is there a lesson for others to come out of this with? Like, I know you said you want you want there to be more shared, like, you'd be able to say an opinion. But, like, yeah. really, it, that's kind of sounds really fluffy because, obviously, we can't. You know, so, like, how, how can we get to a spot where we can do this? I guess the start is, like, I've kept a lot of things to myself and and up until this happened I, I i did that in such a way that you know it one it was nobody's business but two i didn't want it to be a part of their their business uh and our business interacting as player coach and you know i cared for him deeply but like as far as i wasn't trying to mold minds as far as my my political opinions or views or any of that shit stuff but i think the the only thing I can really think of that, like I can be, like you said, fluffy and say, you know, let's just all love each other, man. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it, it's easy to say, but it ain't going to happen. It just doesn't work. It's not working that way. Um, I still believe wholeheartedly that I'm, I'm going to choose the path of being positive and, and loving and, and, and not using hate uh, as my, my tool. But, I do believe that maybe the only way is to start getting some balls and standing up for yourself and and speaking out about it and taking the hits as they come. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the that's the scary thing that I think, and, and really in the NHL and I'm sure in in the NBA and NFL it's it's no different in professional sports or or even where your job's at li on the line, people get really really scared and quiet and i guess so i'm sitting here do you know oh do i not say something because i maybe want to work again in the nhl well or do i just use this and start just standing up and speaking and and not trying to create more divide but maybe speaking and then hopefully try to bring things together a little bit like it's not going to fix the world <laughs> but if 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 everybody felt that their one their one opinion or or speaking out is not going to make any difference, then nothing will make any difference, right? But if you do it, one person does it, next person finally gets a little more balls to say something, say you know what I agree with that guy and or whatever, and 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 speak and not in an attacking way, but just let people just start to have some opinions. Maybe that's the way to start to make change. I I don't know, but being sitting here and and uh not each at e even the smallest thing like sharing my story uh maybe it helps a, a, a tiny bit right but at least i'm at least i'm not just sitting back in my room and uh and sulking about what had happened to me you know what i mean One last break here just to remind you of upmyhockey.com. Uh, outside of the podcast, I do support teams and athletes to reach their collective goals or their individual dreams. Uh, it is a ton of fun to use uh, my background in hockey, my training with mindset, uh, high performance coaching to apply perspectives, uh, changes in perspective, tools, strategies, uh, self-awareness, all these amazing things that allow hockey players to become better, uh, to allow them to practice harder, to be more deliberate and intentional, uh, to be able to understand how to grow leadership and to be a leader. 
uh, how to grow areas of their game where they didn't think that they could grow. Uh, this is a lot, a lot of fun for me. Uh, really, really proud of the work that I've been doing with individuals and with teams. So if you are a coach out there, if you are a hockey parent uh, that doesn't really know how to grow mindset, how to uh, what it's like to work with a coach, whether that be uh, for your player or whether that be for a team that you are involved with, uh, it's really cutting cutting edge and it's really quite honestly, a competitive advantage. If you are interested in making it to the next level, if you are interested in getting your team over the hump and giving them the tools that they need to thrive in life uh, and on the ice, then uh, give me a ring. Uh, Reach out. Let me know that you're interested. I can uh, share my peak potential project with you, which is the baseline and the foundation point for for how I work with all my private clients uh, and and is usually the modality that I turn to when we're working with teams. But I also do workshops and other things. So uh, by all means, if you're curious, be curious, ask questions, find out more. It's still a little bit of a fluffy top topic for a lot of people. What does that mean? What does mindset mean? What does a high-performance coach do? How do you help? Uh, these are all real questions, and I get it, and I'm prepared to answer them. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, I see the results that we're getting. I, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you and to share Uh, what it means uh, to be a high-performance mindset coach and how it could help your team or help your player. Uh, So upmyhockey.com is where you can find out more about that. Uh, Every five weeks at the minimum, I offer a coached course called the Peak Potential Project, uh, Peak Potential Hockey Project. It's a a high-performance mindset course for hockey players who want to find a difference. And this is from all ages. Uh, I really designed it more for like bantam age and up. So like 13, 14 and up into the junior ranks. That was who I thought the the key players would be. However, I've had nine, 10, 11 year olds take it and, and grow leaps and bounds with the material. Uh, so if you are interested, like I said, at myhockey.com, you can reach out to me there or any social media channel. Uh, and now we'll get back to the episode with Dusty Emu. All right. Well, no, you're not, you're definitely not playing the victim card. And I applaud you for that because I mean, it'd be very easy to do that. Um, but the reality is, you I mean, I think you have been victimized You know, and I think why it strikes me so personally is, well, one, because I know you and, you know, I was one of those people that reached out as soon as I found out. Right. And, and, you know, you and and, and always said, hey, you know, whenever you're ready, let's chat. And I wanted to know the inside scoop because that's what I'm about. And and I know that we treat our our clients the same way. I mean, I want to know about the person. Right. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm very granular. You know, like I. I want to know the details like that's that's the way I am because I like having an opinion that I feel is educated too right like right. I don't want to be told what to think and right. like why whatever happened to media allowing people to make their own opinions with the information available and I just don't know why like to me I think that's the solution for me is that media starts being media again and not propagating some type of an opinion that we're all supposed to share collectively right, right. like do a job report the news report the, the report the facts right yeah. like let me know who you are like the fact that you weren't able to tell that side of the story and there wasn't some counter headline to the original headline to me yeah. is wrong you know like who knows probably less people would have read it but at least it's there at least right. someone took the time to know you and wanted to know what your opinion was and then allow me or joe blow or whoever in twitter world to be like oh okay now i'm going to make an opinion right but like that opinion wasn't real really allowed and i just think when when people are scared and I'm not sure why they're scared, like why should someone get fired for having an interview with you after the fact about what it is that's going on? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's so weird to me. And that's the part that's strange. <laughs> and I do think it's a leadership thing. Like it's, it's some, it's leadership as well. Like someone has to be able to stop the noise and say, we're not going to succumb to the noise. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's tough because where does the leadership really begin? that's the tough one right. because well, what if what if let's just pretend in this utopian world brennan shanahan goes on there and says you know what i've talked with dusty for four weeks now and i'm not saying this is true or not true i'm just saying like pretend right right he yeah, is yeah. none of these things he's a stand-up guy we are happy to have him as part of the organization and that's the statement hmm. like what if that was the statement it very well could have been so maybe there's some noise for a little bit about whatever. They answer a couple of questions and it goes away and you're still like, I, like that's kind of like if they knew you, right? And if they and if they did their homework, like to be able to have that type of courage in the face of this, 
little bit of chaos or circus and this little bit of untruth to do that, right? To have that strong voice. Um, when the leaders are scared to have the voice, I mean, that's why I said it earlier. I think that they're not leaders, you know, um, and to cop it on the fact that, hey, I don't know this guy or we didn't do our due diligence. Like, give me a break, you know, <laughs> like that's a give me a break, I think, you know. Um, but again, that's my two cents. Uh, but anyways, man, I mean, I think you're, you're handling this with massive amount of grace. I think. <laughs> um, Thanks. You know, and uh, again, you know, I, I hope you, I hope you are continually able to to share, you know, and hopefully help change this movement. Uh, and I think curiosity is like such a, an amazing trait. And if more people were curious and if more people ask questions to these people, like maybe these stories get heard. Like maybe we're not so such a snap judgment type of thing, right? To want to know more. Um, yeah. Uh, but I don't know how that changes either, you know, in an instant or, or, or how we get those second looks. Well, it's, it's a tough, it really is the, the million dollar question. And when you asked it, it was probably the best question of all is, well, how do you really change it? And uh, it's, it's something that we all should look at ourselves uh, and where we stand in the balls meter, <laughs> uh, because it's a tough one. It's a tough. If you really look at yourself, you're going, "What? what am I really willing to uh, say this or say that?" Uh, you'll find a lot of people step away from the plate <laughs> and and not swing. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, it really is. It's just a fact of life. And you know what? I don't. I don't uh, look at that person and go, "You know what? You got to You know how. How, you know, how dare you not have the balls to, to speak out? I get it. I really do. Because, you know, we, we, we have our jobs, we love our jobs and, you know, we got to provide and, and, you know, there's that line that people got to, are we willing to cross this to, to sacrifice possibly our job or, or, or get canceled? But if I figured, you know what, like I've already lost my, <laughs> I lost my, my uh, career up to this point. I'm, but I'm trying to create, a, build a new direction. So I'm like, you know, at least let me, let me, let me step out there, <laughs> step out there a little bit and, and try to, to, uh, to make my mess, make a little message out there known and, and see what kind of traction it gets. And, and uh, I'm not looking to create fights again, you know, like a part of me, I'll be honest with you, Jason was, I let it, um die and, and dealt with other things for the four or five months and i was like you know what it's quiet now right uh the damage is done like it really is like it's like as far as my reputation and because i haven't spoken and all this and finally once i was able to release a statement i was like oh that felt good man <laughs> and then i was like you know what maybe i'm i'm gonna reach back out to Jason and this will be my starting point. And, uh, and this feels good. You know what? But you get scared because you're like, do I want to open this can of worm? Well, open up this can of worms again and get a couple more trolls, you know, attacking me again and stuff like that. But it's kind of, that's the whole game plan with them. Right. Like, it, it doesn't feel good when you get attacked like that. So it, it silences so many people. Right. And um, so I'm just going to, you know, continue if, if people hear it and, 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 you know, you look at this whole talk, we never talked about, it wasn't about me, even still not about my views or standing up for my views or, or, or any of these different things. It was, I'm really more focused on changing how we deal with this and, and, and getting rid of this, this culture. Uh, it's not healthy for, you know what? I'm on the back nine, man. I, so in all essence, it affects me a whole lot less uh, than my kids and my grandkids. You know what? So that's where the balls for me kind of, I get a little more uh, I'm willing to, you know, dig my feet in and, and hold my ground a little bit because my kids and my grandkids don't deserve to, to be living in this kind of culture. Um, it's not right. I don't think it's healthy for the kids. And, um, 
you know, that's where I look to get a little more uh, strength in, in, in being able to speak about this because, you know, you have kids and, and can you imagine living, growing up now, being afraid to say anything? Right. Are you going to make fun of, you're going to get, not just make, back in the day, you get bullied or whatever. You you, you went out to the the, the, the back of the school uh, playground and you just had it out. <laughs> and you dealt with it, yeah. you know, with your fists and, you know, maybe barbaric, but it was easily and it was done, right? Now it's just so much more, you know, we used to get a black eye and it'd be over, but the stuff that happens now is damaging to our kids. And uh, that's where I'm building my strength. Um, you know, if it screws up me ever working in the NHL again, so be it. Um, but it's it's uh it's definitely a, a topic that needs to be uh shared and and hopefully my story can shed some light on it yeah no man fair enough and words matter and anyway, i'm going to jump on the troll police right now because you you've used the word balls now a few times in this, <laughs> in this podcast and the same people that are like grabbing at you for whatever your likes were are going to call you misogynist now for using balls as a term of courage. You know, well, is, mean? That like, a ba- is that a bad thing? Well, I mean, to some people, words matter, you know, like that word would matter and they would think that that doesn't include <laughs> yeah, the females. And, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not speaking from that spot. But I mean, right. my point with that is too, like for those of you listening that that was a triggering word for you, if it was, like you have to understand the inherent like what's the meaning what's the intent like what is your intent with that like are you trying to divide no right like where is that coming from and i think that's where like you know the red light trigger police are like ah got him you know like no (laughs) you didn't get him you know you didn't get anything like that's not that's not where, where that where that word was meant from coming from but it's just like i don't know we just gotta breathe you know like (laughs) breathe because you and I and everyone else are going to say the wrong, maybe micro word at the wrong time. Um, I still say guys when I'm talking to to teams that'll have a girl on it. And I feel bad about that, you know, because I'm not, it's in my vocabulary, right? It's hard for me to switch that. Um, it's not meant to be offensive. I'm not trying to offend, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be inclusive. Um, but mm-hmm. that if I say that term in front of the wrong people, all of a sudden fingers are pointed, right? Oh, this guy, this guy's a dinosaur. He doesn't get it you know, or whatever the case may be. And it's like, what is the intent first? Right. What is the intent? What, where, where is this coming from? What are we trying to do? What is the overall message? And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm acknowledging that I need to change some of the language that I use um, because times are different. Um, And I think that we are all in a spot of of continual growth. Uh, But yeah, let's not be so quick to jump and point and, you know, like let's, I don't know. Like you said, let's let's love a little more. Let's try and respect a little more. Yeah. Let's you know. Not- you know, it's great that you brought up that using a certain word. I think it's a great uh, kind of tail end of this. Be- and you know what? There's a small part to be like, well, should we edit that or whatever? But you know what? I think it's great to to show that as an example and listen to me for this hour or whatever. And hopefully you get a better idea of who I am and the type of person I am. Uh, I know it's only an hour's worth, but that I'm not uh, this evil person. And uh, anybody that's ever met me or worked with me knows where my intent is and uh, where my heart is. And and I'm generally... I, uh, I'm a flawed, but I'm generally a good person. And uh, the fact that I use a certain type of language or or whatever um, should bear no, um, it shouldn't have anything uh, to do with me as a person, you know, can be brought up and say, hey, you know what, certain people might think this and then I can make my judgment on whether, but I'll tell you, like, there's so many things now people can't, can and can't say and uh, but there's a way to deal with that. Right. Like not go instead of going uh, from this podcast and listening or watching to your social media account and plaster something, 
instead maybe private dm jason padolin or and try to get in contact with me and say hey certain people out in the in the community now might find this this or this offensive or um i wasn't i'm not sure if you were aware of that but just giving you a heads up that you know this is kind of where things are at now right done deal yeah avoided ruining people's lives <laughs> and uh and just it just a s- simple way to deal with something, right? Yeah. But it's just not how it gets dealt with anymore. Yeah, no, I know. I agree. But it's, just maybe we'll end off with your statement because I did like your uh, uh, statement. I, I read it in the introduction. Um, so it's it's been out there. So we, I, I won't read it now. But um, like you said, this is four or five months later. Mm. Is is Obviously, you're comfortable with it because you released it. But I bet you it would have maybe said a few different things, potentially, like after day one to, you know, week one to, you know, <laughs> week four. Like, has there been a few iterations in that? Or how long in the making was that Was that statement? The, the base of it was fairly early. The, the, so it, it wasn't like I, I scratched it and then waited five months and then made another one. Like, I made it fairly soon after... The, you know, like a week after, and I was I was really chomping at the bit to speak and def- and defend myself because uh, the stuff that was being portrayed, I was like, this is not me, and that does, for anybody that's never had that happen to them, it's not a good feeling. Uh, like, is it's like, and especially when you're in the public, right? And now I built this reputation of myself of who I was, and now it's just smeared. So I wanted to speak out, right? Because it was lies; it wasn't true. And on, you know, advice uh, legally uh, to to not speak was the right thing to do. Plus, some friendly advice as well that you know, just give it some time. Give it some time, and it actually was a good idea because it helped me see things, uh, not from the uh, being losing everything losing my job losing you know my career and and everything uh it became more about really what what had happened and what is happening to lots of people and so yeah it kind of (laughs) shifted great question to ask you know as far as that statement because it kind of it morphed as it went along because you know my thoughts on the whole thing the base was the same though, but you know, some things I definitely, my focus shifted. Yeah. Yeah. I know I said that a few times at the conversations, just like, you know, who you are, like the poster of dusty, like it'd be, I'd have you with the, your goalie mask on a back shelf, you know, with the, your guitar in hand, <laughs> um, you know, dressed up in the style that you like to dress up in and, and maybe a motorcycle there in the background too. <laughs> and it's like, you know, like you're just, you're just laid back. Like you're, you're, you remind me of Jared Bender and your approach. Like you just seem like you should be on a beach, like surfing, you know, like you're, you're not, uh, you know, when I think of some of these nasty words that they were calling you, like I couldn't think of you being any farther from the truth, like that being farther wrong. Right. And missing, yeah. missing the mark. So, Th- thanks, um, man. which is why I think it's kind of such a, that it can happen to kind of anyone, you know, yeah. uh, it seems like, and, uh, and I don't want this to be fear-based either. Like they don't want the lesson to be here. Like don't speak out. It can happen to <laughs> us. It can happen to you. Which, but it's so hard for people not to make that connection, you know. Yeah. And and I think the goal here was at least to have some type of a pragmatic conversation about it. You yeah. know, like that. I think there are independent thinkers that still exist. You know, that that still can see through the trees sometimes and uh, and get to some of these truths and. And I guess it's just my wish at the end of the day that that more of these people, whether it be in the media or in leadership's positions in, in, the, in the public eye, that uh, have the time and have the courage and, and have the resources to, to get the full picture and then to make a real decision, you know, mm-hmm. instead of one that's imparted or fragmented by the by the whims of social media, which seems to be the way it goes sometimes, unfortunately. So that's my that's my wish, Dusty. I don't know if, if you have any final comments on the whole thing. Uh, you know what? I just to end it off. I just want everybody to to stay uh, hopeful. You know, hopeful and and positive that we can come together uh, as a society. And this sounds <laughs> really poofy, but you know, it's the truth, man. Like, if we're 
if we can't find a common uh, ground together, you know, it's going to be an ugly place. It's getting ugly out there. And I just want to try to help that, you know, in it, in it, in it, even if it's just a small little bit. So um, I'm here for whoever. I always will be. Uh, if, you, if you feel you're, you need a, sometimes talking with people helps. And, you know, we both are in that business. And uh, it might not start out with you speaking publicly, but maybe it starts out with you speaking to a person like Jason or myself. Right. Yeah, I know. Good stuff, man. Uh, we have to find, try and find, if we, if we go into conversations trying to find common ground instead of trying to find, you know, the, the difference, I mean, I think that's a great, really good starting point too. Um, mm. It seems just with everything that's going on and, and I mean, the C word COVID being one of the main factors here with, you know, the, the disease of the unvaccinated or the vaccinated and where you are on that side of the fence. And it's just become so polarizing uh, that, yeah, I mean, like we're, we're instantly attaching labels to to both sides of this thing. And, and we're finding reasons to not get along or to not agree or to, to find contention where, you know, we can just as easily choose a different narrative, right? And try to find common ground with it and trying to find, you know, the, the human decision and, and the human trying to make the best choice for themselves, you know, at the, at the end of this. And I just feel like it's become really, really polarizing in lots of areas of society. And um, having real honest conversations is a great way to start. And it's really hard to do that in the news when you're a headline culture. So I think that's why these, like this podcast, I hope is, is good. Um, not that I agree with everything Joe Rogan says, says but like th these types of outlets, right, where you can actually have an opinion and discuss it. I, I think it's healthy. It's good because uh, because it's uh, you're not seeing it on on CBC or or you know <laughs> CNN or you, you you know you know what you're going to get sometimes when you turn on the turn on the TV channel, and that shouldn't be what it's about, right? I should I should I should be able to find uh, new opinions, new ideas, new conversations uh, when, when I when I turn on the TV, and it's kind of it's becoming not that way, but anyways, that's my ramble on my rant. I, I know that we're kind of on the same fence with that and we, we both enjoy a good conversation and I think that's a great place to start. So have conversations, have open conversations, mm -hmm. be willing to listen uh, and be willing to share your opinion. I think that's the whole thing. And that's what I talk about with athletes too, like the empowerment of that. Like as soon as we hide from who we are and what we, what our thoughts are, I mean, we're in trouble. So. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the motto I always said to myself when I first got involved in coaching uh, in the NHL was regardless of anything, I was going to be true to me and just be me. And we talked about that in the past. And um, I'm really going to try to live up to my own beliefs and just, you know, continue just to be me. And, uh, and I believe that, you know, hopefully good will prevail for me. And, and uh, I'm really appreciate you, you uh, taking the time to, to listen. I know, you know, I know that you, you wanted uh, to, you know, f let people hear some of this stuff. So hopefully some of your viewers get something out of this, out of this and, and uh, hopefully maybe we can shed some light, some help. Awesome, man. Yeah. And this is a, this is like the first podcast that has not really been hockey related at all. Um, yeah. He is on an earlier episode where we get into all types of, you know, goaltending strategy and his coaching philosophy and what he's all about. And there's lots of good hockey lessons in that. Um, so by all means, go check that out. But, you know, for this time being, I thought this was a story that needed to be heard and a topic that needed to be chatted about. So thank you so much for being willing to share and trusting me with your story, Dusty. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, by all means, you know, I wish you the best in, in anything that's coming your way and uh, keep fighting the good fight, my friend. Oh, well, thanks so much, buddy. And all the best to you and the fam. Thanks, sir. Well, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Uh, I hope we did that justice. I mean, it, it's so hard to navigate uh, that space, you know, and even after we got off, Dusty was like, geez, I was nervous. And I was like, man, I wish you would have said that, you know? He's like, you know, I knew what I wanted to say and I know what I feel, but you just, you just don't know, you know? And, uh, and yeah, in this day and age, uh, I feel comfortable in my own skin at 45. I feel that I'm trying to do the right thing. I feel that I'm trying to support people and be inclusive, not divisive. Uh, and I know I screw up. I know I don't get it right all the time. Uh, I don't think it's about being perfect. Like I said in the episode, I think it's about the intention. And I think it's about where it comes from in your heart. 
and what it is we're trying to do. And sometimes these conversations are difficult, but I think they need to be had. And I think on the tough subjects, we have to be brave enough and strong enough to be able to share what we think. Um, obviously with the intention of not trying to prove somebody wrong. That's the other thing too, is like, if we can share collectively uh, our opinions, and if we can be prepared to even debate them, let the best idea win, right? Like, let us be prepared to challenge each other. Let us be prepared to embrace different views and to question different views and to try and live in that thought for a while and see how it works um, and not be so quick to cast judgment. I think that's like the end of, of like my takeaway with this whole cancel culture thing is that we're just so quick to judge and to point the finger and to look down our nose that we know it, they don't get it. And we're all guilty of it, of course, myself too, we're humans, like we're flawed, that's the whole thing, like we, we, we don't get everything. Um, but my goodness, for someone like Dusty to go through what he did, and there's other names that, that this kind of stuff has happened to, uh, it's just not right, you know? And, and for, for leadership and for media not to want to know the other side of the story, to not to not think it's their job to dig in, and for the leadership, uh, in this scenario, the MLSE, uh, I think that they were cowards in this. You know, that's a pretty bold statement. And I don't know what happened on the inside, but I do know that Dusty wasn't called, <laughs> that, does, that, that they, were, they did not try to figure it out, that they just ran. And, and there was no need to run. You know, I don't think leaders run. I think leaders stand and they want to find out what's going on. And, uh, and obviously this scenario is not just about the Toronto Maple Leafs or MLSE, and it's not just about uh, one, one enterprise or another. This is a collective issue uh, that is happening. And uh, yeah, I think it's scary. Because I think if we can't speak and if we can't say what we want um, without fear of you know, the worst possible scenario coming, then we're in trouble. Uh, and we live in North America for a reason. I don't think that's. I think that's one of the reasons why we live here is that this is supposed to be some place where we can share opinions and have opinions and and be able to deal with the opinions. So again, that's me. I hope we did this justice. Uh, I hope you understand where our intent was with this. It really isn't to point fingers uh, at anyone. It's trying to find a solution. It's trying to move forward. Uh, it's trying to, you know support Dusty, allow him to have his spot to say what he wanted to say. And I thought that was really important. Uh, and thank you, Dusty, for sharing uh, your, you know, your thoughts with us and for choosing this platform and up my hockey to do it, uh, that you feel safe enough in, uh, in sharing that on, on this spot for the first time. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, be brave with your opinions. Be, uh, be willing to look at yourself in the mirror and your own opinions. Be willing to accept others. Uh, and let's not just be so, uh, so quick to judge. Play hard. Keep your head up.